Yeah, hi everybody, this is Tony. Now, before we get started today, I wanted to bring up a rather prescient issue on my mind uh, that's been there for the last, I don't know, six days or so, ever since I had to go to Jefferson Park to go check on my senile aunt and make sure she wasn't assaulting her caretakers again. Anyway, on the way to her house, I had to pass that defunct shopping plaza off Irving Park Road. You know, the one where the Payless shoe store used to be, but they shut down in like 97. Anyway, last time I went by... I noticed that in the Payless storefront, there was suddenly a COVID testing center that hadn't been there even the week before. And it made me a little suspicious, you know, due to the hand-drawn signs in the windows and the overall two-bit stench of the place. So I looked into it, and then I had Al get down at street level, boots on the ground, and research some of these COVID testing facilities that have been popping up like scabies rashes all over the tri-state area the last few weeks. I even seen one popping up next to an Italian beef stand off Halstead on the south side. And that one even had a little guy posted up out front jumping around and dancing in a coronavirus particle costume. Okay? Now, our independent research has indeed confirmed that these establishments, if you can call them that, are actually scams and they're just trying to take your information down. And next thing you know, you'll be getting charges for all kinds of high-end appliances, firearms, dildos, high-end furniture, fuzzy handcuffs, exotic lingerie, all charged to your credit card. And the way that the banks are these days, they're so terrible, they won't even let you get none of it back. So anyway, here's a public service announcement regarding this rather pressing issue on behalf of Al Scorch. Al? Hey, Tone, we're coming to you live from the streets of Chicago out here. Want to do a public service announcement. It's been happening in Chicago. Maybe it's happened a lot of other places, too. Illegitimate testing sites for COVID-19. You got to make sure that you're not rolling up to something like this over here. You see that? You, know, you see it right there? Some fly-by-night operation, looks like a freaking white castle. Where, you know, they're setting up shop in some kind of derelict building, maybe. You know, they got an old van seat out front. That's never a good sign. Over here. Here on the street, we got an unmarked Penske, and if that's not screaming out, because you know what they put in there, you know, know what they what got is. in that truck. So just be careful, everybody. Don't uh, you know, don't go get your COVID-19 test in an old derelict automotive shop, and stay safe out there. Take care, bye. We'll have more on this issue next episode. Now here's the feature. Okay, this is a wonderful species to start off this episode with. This is the genus Gorteria. This is Gorteria diffusa. And you can see from those black embossed central ligules right there, those rays, that this uh, this quote-unquote daisy, remember the Asteraceae, the sunflower family, is mimicking uh, Megapalpus capensis, a very common pollinator down here known as the uh, Cape Bee Fly. And this is one of quite a few unrelated plants that do this, Gorteria diffusa. Uh, has a, quite a few different uh, varieties. Uh, you could see this one. Look at those styles poking out, those little orange reds. You got about, I don't know, 20, 30 little florets in there. But look at that embossing. Honestly, it fooled me when I first seen this. I thought there actually was a Cape bee fly in there, a quote-unquote monkey beetle. It's actually a bee fly, but they've been, they were been called monkey beetles for a little bit. It's kind of a misnomer. Anyway, then, of course, look at the filaries poking out, those little maroon spiky things with the ciliate hairs coming off them nice. Fucking amazing plant. You know, I, I'd love the grodies in uh, North America, but they're probably invasive as hell like many of the composites from South Africa. Look at this thing. Then look at the underside of those ligules too, the abaxial sides. Oh, banger. So anyway, I mean, look at it. Look at how perfect that is. And again, there's you got irises that do that. There's a pelargonium that does this, a geranium. Okay, makes you wonder, this... this is a huge selective pressure itself, this insect, Megapalpus capensis, okay? How many? How long did it take for this to evolve? Why does it occur in so many different lineages? Probably because this is one of the most dominant pollinators in the region, all right? Got to thank Megapalpus capensis again for that. Check out Pelargonium tricolor. That's another banger that does this. It's fucking unbelievable. Caterpillars really love the, the uh, Isoaceae. They really love the, the mesems, the mesems. They're not going for anything else. Haven't seen them on any other plants. Now look at this. Remember the geranium family right here? Look at those fruits. See those bird beak fruits in the background? Let's zoom in on those, those anthers up there. This is Monsonia spinosa. Look at a yellow flower. Look at all that pollen coming off. 15 stamens on the genus Monsonia. Look at it. And a five-lobed style 
five lobed stigma, excuse me, like we see in a geranium family. All right, this thing's a banger. And look at those those petioles to those leaves just turn into spines afterwards. Keep the herbivores away. Beautiful glaucous green color. Ah, fucking great plant all over the Maquilane. Okay, and then large monocot genus here. Remember the uh, asparagus family, asparagaceae subfamily, Celoideatus, the genus Albuca. Look at those white peoples, how they got that little recurved tip at the end of them, that little hood. All right, you got six stamens surrounding a central ovary. Okay, but in some of these species, you got three staminodes, not producing any pollen at all, and then three fertile stamens. This one, all the six stamens are fertile. Look at those uh, almost cylindrical leaves, nice geophyte. You got a corm in the ground right there. All right, geophytic habit in the Maquiland, very common. All right, rather large genus again. Like I said, 100 species. Okay, so we got the more geraniums, more geraniaceae. Got the basal rosetta leaves. There's the inflorescence. Very hairy, of course, like uh, many of them tend to be. This is Pelargonium triste. Could see those anthers poking out. But even more interesting, oh, we got the beetle daisies too. Those are always nice. They're always so nice. More interesting, we got a species in the iris family in the genus Ferraria. Ooh, hairy anthers. Look at a frilly. Look at those frilly teeples. Holy shit. God damn, look at that. Barely six inches tall. Barely six inches. Wonder what it smells like. Some of these stink, but some smell nice. There's those anthers on the underside. Pollinators got to crawl into that tube, brush up against those anthers, pick up some pollen, drop some off, yada yada. God damn! Look at those teeples. Oh, for, they look like some, looks like some sort of weird uh, damn jellyfish tentacle. Ah! And again with the hairy anthers. Just coming up in a little depression on the ground. Smells a little bit. Not bad, not too bad. But not too good. But all you got to do is indicate you got some carbohydrates in there that make it worth going into. That make it worth crawling into. You know, for the pollinators. Ferraria macroclamus. One of 18 species in a genus, Ferraria. Beautiful genus here. Now you got something nice to think of when you hear the name Ferrari instead of some knob in a sports car. And here we are back in the Scrof dungeon, the Scrofulariaceae dungeon. This is Aptosimum indivisum, forming a little mat, a little subshrub, a woody subshrub with those purple zygomorphic flowers. 23 species in this genus. Look at that. Thought he was going to be a live one. He was just hiding, but he died. He's gone. It's kind of sad. Got the nice irises, though, coming up. Huh? Is that a Babiana, maybe? That's a Babiana. That's a Laparusia. Arusia, look at it. Look at it. Oh, look at a pattern there. Look at a purple pollen, purple pollen, and then a style up above the anthers. A, a tree lobe style. And of course, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a day botanizing in a northern cape if you didn't see a species of gladiolus. There you go. No idea what this one is. You got 300 species in this genus, six tepals, three stamens. Look at the texture of that style up top. Those three elongated style branches. Look, you got a little bit of green on the uh, inner part of those tepals. Ah, so many species in that genus, goddammit. Look at this habitat, pretty nice, huh? And look at this, this spiny composite, this spiny member of the sunflower family, Asteraceae. Looks like a thistle, but it's not related to thistles at all, except for being in the same family. Different subfamily here. This is the chicory subfamily. Look at those beautiful florets with those long star-like uh, corolla lobes. Anyways, Burkea fruticosa. There's about 70 species in the genus Burkea. They're all relatively unpleasant to the touch. Look at the abaxial surface on these leaves. White and fuzzy. You got fuzzy stems, too. Look, another osteospermum. With the winged canes. This stinky ass foliage, ugh, like a turpentine mixed with burning rubber smell. Always got to get a money shot of the phyleries. Unicereate. With the succulent leaves too. Kind of forming a little bush. Okay, this monocot has it all real weirdo right here. Cyanella orchidiformis, Tecophiliaceae. Enantheosile, see how that style, that style down below, that hook style curves, 
to the right, okay, to avoid the cross-pollination. Nice. This genus has it all. Dimorphic anthers, two different kinds of anthers. You got the buzz pollination. You got the enantiostyle. And then uh, you got a nice little basal rosette of, uh, of leaves down there. Asparagales is the order. Look, so you got this, this really hard-packed, sandy soil. Then you got this weird bastard. What do you think that is? No, uh, no flowers. Some sort of damn geophyte. Red, uh, like little spiky fingers. You got a, possibly a Bobiana, some sort of iridaceae sticking up at the ground over there. Little iron-like uh, pebbles all over the ground. The ground just, it's hematite everywhere. Very heavy, very iron rich, little iron concretions. Oh, banger alert. We got a Lacanalia. God damn, what a wonderful genus, huh? Very species rich in the Cape. Incredible geophyte. Look at it. Leaves looking a little sun stressed. Look, they're curled in. Curled in a little bit. Not flat, not open and exposed. Oh, look, you got the farina. I'm wiping off with my greasy dago thumbs. There's another one. The hyacinth family. Hyacinthaceae. Sometimes also listed as uh, the Cilioidea with the C, S C, of uh, a larger asparagaceae family. But I, I don't really care for that. The, that the uh, APG2 classification. I like uh, I like hyacinthaceae. Hyacinthaceae and then asparagales is the order. Either way, what a great genus. Somewhat more sparse flowered, not as dense of an inflorescence here as some of the others we've seen. But uh, you still got those bulbous perianths with uh, the anthers just barely poking out. The color on this guy's incredible. Nice violet, nice purple. Look at this Babiana, okay? We missed it, a little too late. Still pretty remarkable to see though. Low growing, those flowers are almost somewhat sessile. I mean, they are sessile actually. Well, no, maybe not. Maybe you got a little bit of a peduncle there. Palm-like foliage, those palm-like unifacial leaves. Papery, papery leaves. There's the old flowers. It's already going to fruit. What an incredible genus. Iridaceae, you gotta give it to the irises. They really know how to do this landscape well, huh? Along with Isoaceae. Oh no, I just pissed off those ants. They're gonna spray formic acid all over me. That's a nice areocephalus though, and you can actually see it. It's still in flower. Got a couple ligules left. Areocephalus, huh? Fuzzy head, like a little cotton swab. Step over here. These guys are they're not gonna be happy with me. Put them on the list. See, there's the flowers still. Asteraceae. Nice money shot. Get a nice money shot of those uh those flower heads. Those little yellow styles poking out. Oh huge genus in the Cape. Many, many species. Coming up amongst the uh, the Mesem, this Isoaceous bastard, one of fucking got hundreds. Okay, look at this, look at this. You got 10 flower heads grouped together. The individual florets are tiny. Each flower head only has two white ligules, each with three lobes, like little bunny ears right there. Look at those woolly phyleries through everything about this goddamn plant is woolly. Woolly head areocephalus, that's a genus. Oh, look right here, on, on the iron-rich lateritic soil, we got another succulent senecio. Look at the pappus, nice. And look at that trunk, that pape with that papery bark. All right, and then more interesting, over here, we got a, uh, a misem, isoaceae. There's that uh, little uh, wooden fig capsule fruit. Just say fig, it looks like a fig. That's what they call them right here, figgies. Kind of a weird name, whatever. It's not, not uh, what would come to mind uh, for me, but uh, you know, to each their own. There's that uh, capsule fruit before they dry out. They still got the red bay lane pigments in there. But look at those uh, leaves. Look at those individual succulent leaves with the teeth on them. That's something we haven't seen yet, huh? Coming up amongst another shrub, beneath another shrub. 
obviously utilizing the shade because it's probably hot as balls here in summer. Look at this, another mesum. Ninety-six percent of all the species in this family occur in South Africa. In the family Isoaceae. Oh look, you got a nice crassula right there. Yeah, who knows what species this is? You know, impossible to find out without flowers. It's just, you know, alternating pairs of two opposite leaves. Nice glaucous color on there, though. Nice bluish. Kind of like mint green color. And then you got those betaline pigments going strong in the pink and red areas of the leaves right there. Eyes away seeds. Look, looks like we got a uh, species of Diosporos. Same family, at least. Euclea tomentosa ebonaceae. Fuzzy leaves, fuzzy fruits, trichomes on everything. Sclerophylla leaf. Look at the texture on it. Somewhat scabbard. Small tree. Look at how nutrient poor this soil must be. Iron rich but nutrient poor. Where there is soil, it's mostly rock. Got to be hard to grow here. You got to have some uh, some pretty stringent adaptations. Look, more weird crassulas. Hiding beneath another shrub, which is not dead. More bizarre crassulaceae. Adromiscus, you know, probably uh, subviridus. You know, these guys like to hide under the shrubs. And they got that mottling on those uh, juicy succulent leaves. It looks like a metamorphosed mudstone. Metamorphosed shales. Quite iron rich too. And probably very old. Here's a cool family, Loranthaceae, the tropical mistletoes. Always a pleasure to see these. Looks like it's infecting some sort of a spiny fabid, possibly a prosopis. And uh, there's the flowers on it. Look, you can see there's the, the stems are just poking out from the main trunk. This is the, uh, the parasite. There's the host. And uh, here's those flowers. Look at it. Not quite open yet, but you got some fruits on there too. Are they juicy? Oh yeah, look at that. Juicy and sticky, mucilaginous. Tapenanthus oleifolius, relatively wide distribution for this guy throughout all the southern part of the African continent. Red tubular flowers, bird pollinated, five tepals. Okay, look, we're in a little uh, little spring. We got some wawa down there. We got some water and what this shit. Got another species of uh, tetragonia. Look at those anthers. Danglers. Succulent leaves. Winged fruits. Just coming up right on the, uh, the bank of this uh, little creek. And we got salvia dentata. Such a pleasant smell. Got those two uh, two stamens poking out, those two lever mechanism stamens. Gotta crack that flower open. Oh no, you can see them right there. You can see the little paddles that push the, the anthers down into the pollinator's back. A bifid style above. And of course, like so many of the African salvia, that corolla just, or the, excuse me, the calyx just looks like a little mouth. See this? This part, the calyx, after the corolla's already fallen out, looks like a little mouth. You could see this guy blooming from uh, almost half a mile away. Just a big flag of pink. A big pink flag. Like that uh, Wire album. Was that who, who did that? Look on the inside of that perianth. You got the blue. And then the uh, petals tend to age to pink. Lobostemin. Lobostemin. However you want to pronounce that. Look at the leaves too. Adapted, adapted to the Zerica uh, lifestyle. Covered in little trichomes, red stems, mint green leaves. Looking through my perianth. Five stamens and then the style. The only little rod in there that doesn't have an anther on top of it, right in the center. Pretty spe A pretty species rich genus. 
in the Cape. Almost got the little hint of a scorpioid sign right there, a helicoid sign. Baraginaceae, but again, looks like it could be, I don't know, 40, 50 million years removed from uh, the North American taxa that you might otherwise be familiar with. Incredible, covered in a beast, humming with, humming with pollinators. Bees and flies. Enter the prolonged landscape money shot, nice. Oh, kind of a hard fence to circumvent. You gotta lift that top one up then crawl over. I'm not sure if they got that there because they want to keep us out or what, but uh doesn't seem to work too well anyway. Let's see what we got going on down here. Look, coming up next to the shit. How charming. Oh, that's so heinous. You got another species of Laparusia. Six tepals, the patternings on the three bottom ones, of course. Looks like you got some, uh, look at those appendages coming out, looking like little horns coming out of each one of those bottom three tepals. Another way to uh, manipulate pollinator behavior, perhaps. And you got purple pollen coming out of three anthers at the top of the corolla. Oh. And then, of course, behind the anthers, you got the stigma with six branches on it. Looks like uh, three different arms that split in two. Of course, you got those bracts. Laparusa, of course, have, have those uh, very distinct bracts that subtend each of the flowers that kind of go off like that. See, unifacial leaves, very, uh, very distinct phyllotaxy here as well. Look at the striations on that period too. Ah, oh, God damn. Coming up on what appears to be sand composed of uh, metamorphous granite. Weathered metamorphous granite. Look at these geraniums. God damn. Look at that. They stand out. So bright. So bright on this substrate. This sandy substrate. Like that one's a... Uh, Apparently in a female face. And this guy's still got his anthers out. A couple of them gone to fruit already. Another Lacanalia right there. Hyacinthaceae. Look how big those leaves are on. And then we got Tylocodon Wallichii. Which the rancher's always trying to remove these. Look at this nice blue color on those finger-like leaves. Crassulaceae is the family here. But the rancher's always trying to remove these because they poison the cattle and with the shit. But look at the base of those leaves. And you can see uh, the little buds from which they come. You know, you see these succulent stalks. See that? You can see the scales right there. Look at that. Little little blue fingers in the, in the scrub just poking up. Look at it, we got a species of Dianthus. Carnation family, Caryophyllaceae. Look at it, there's, there's a close-up money shot of those, uh, those stamens. How many style branches? It should be about three. I see two. Smells somewhat fragrant, let's flip it over. Oh, you got a nice little tangerine color on the abaxial surface of those petals. Oh God, I've been eating these Weetabix and you know, it tastes like, it, it feels exactly like eating drywall. Like someone just, you know, punched a hole in the drywall, ripped out a chunk and stuck it in my mouth. Ugh, oh, heinous. Anyway, we're a little bit more uh, westwards towards the coast, okay? Towards the Atlantic Ocean. And it's still, still maybe 20, maybe 25 miles out, okay? A little chillier, it's pretty cold, not gonna lie. I'm wearing a hoodie, I got pants on, okay? This is not fucking shorts and t-shirt weather, but uh, you can see splayed out in front of me, we got a whole bunch of interesting stuff going on, especially uh, if we're talking Isoaceae.
Look at this guy. You get those those pink petaloid staminodes, and you got bladder cells on those opposite leaves. Drosanthemum's the genus here. Then over here we got the one of the brassicas, the brassicaceae, the most uh, species-rich gene. I think it's one of the only genera in the uh, Western Cape and the Northern Cape. Heliophylla. There's the little silex. There's the four petals, six stamens in there. And there's those uh, brassicaceous sepals, kind of keeled and rounded at the ends. Yeah, just let's take a closer look at this. Get down on the ground. Those flowers really are something. Look at dozens of stamens, petaloid staminodes, and again, the bladder cells. The epidermal bladder cells, nice. There's the fruit, just the woody capsule. Epidermal bladder cells, and it's drosanthemum. You know, one day I'll figure out the isoaceous uh, key, but uh, it's not going to be today. More juicy composites. Oh my God, is this a Sahara mustard? No, it's one of the. It's one of those uh, awful brassicas. No, maybe it is. One of the brassicas. Oh, but it's native here, so I don't have to hate it. It's been part of this ecosystem for a long time. Anyway, uh, that aside, look at this uh, juicy composite. When I say juicy, I mean glandular as hell. How does it smell? Oh, not not that great, but not that good. There's the phyleries. Ooh, so many bristles. Bristly as phyleries, covered in a hair, it's multi-seriate. Flowers are closed up. It is a little chilly. It is a little chilly. And yeah, we're gonna open them anyway. And of course you got that Mesembryanthemum barclii right there. Something just bit me, stung me. What the shit was it? Giant bastard, look at that. Is he getting ready to put out flowers here? What's he doing? Look at it. Look at a glance. Look at it, all those little water-filled bladders and the ends of those leaves. Ugh. God, every, every plant here stinks. Every plant here smells absolutely terrible. Well, some of the composites smell good. Look into my Arctotus fastuosa. Look at that guy. Oh, banger. Highly invasive in uh, some areas of California, but very beautiful here where it's native. Little rads. Look at those little styles. And then crouching down next to the ground, we got a species of Zaluzianskia, one of the uh, actinomorphic like they all t seem to be out here, Scrofulariaceae, one of the, the uh, radial scrofs. Look at it, these would be purple too. Look at a pattern on it, little snowflake, ooh. But of course you got the glands, you got that tube flower, pro probably uh, pollinated by the proboscid flies nice. Stick their, their tongue down in there. Bunch of tiny annuals right here. And a little uh, annual bellflower, Wallenbergia. Look at that three-lobed style, Campanulaceae. It's always hard to find the stamens in these damn Wallenbergias. They must be down there at the bottom. This genus contains 260 species found on all continents except North America. Here we go, one of the uh, Amaryllids, Brunsvigia is the genus here. Strap-shaped leaves and a gigantic bulb in the ground. But of course, uh, it's not going to be sending up a flower for another few months. They got that uh, bulb stashed in the ground. They're just gathering up energy right now. Store that energy in the ground. Leaves will dry out. The leaves will dehiss. And then they'll just send up a flower in a couple months. Amarilla daisy. That's the way they do it. Nice tracheandra. Wonderful genus here those flowers look at those flowers on those race seems aloe family espotilaceae look at those leaves almost got a farina on them the fucking bulb for this thing must be huge tracheandra falcata massive leaves almost looking like amaryllid leaves oh and there we go get down on the ground to look at another weird scroff look at this liperia tristis those yellow tubular flowers for the long tongue flies to get in there. They got the glands and everything, glands and hairs on these bastards. 
Look at that. Just coming up out the uh, quartz city sand. So we're a little late, but uh, still in a desert. It's basically filled with wildflowers with a carpet of annual wildflowers. Plus a handful of geophytes. Such a pleasant place to be. <laughs> but of course, then I automatically got to think of like worst places I could be. Like what would suck the most? Oh, I don't know why I do it. Spend too much time in places I hate. Oh, anyway. Oh, nice, Miss Sam. Let's get down there and look at this guy. Look at the color. The nice color to the leaves. Then you get the white petaloid stamens. Look at the glands on this. Look at, look at the fucking glands on these leaves. Well, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Oh, look, it's a Brunsvigia that got its, got its roost exposed a little bit. You had that, uh, it must have been some erosion. And look, here's the inflorescence, too. Oh, you can see they just break off, and then like a tumbleweed, just roll along these sandy plains, scattering seeds everywhere. Again, yeah, Amaryllis family. You like my Gethalith? You like my Gethalith? Amaryllis family again. Look at that. Got that bulb in the ground right there. Like somebody was smoking crack, and then their blue hair got electrocuted. Nice. Oh, you get the papery sheath. Oh, that's that's a real banger right there. The color on these. You getting money shots of these? You getting save a screenshot or something of some of these bangers. Now this guy, this is a nice sign off for tonight. Lamparusia spinosa. Pretty restricted range on this. Namaqualand irises. Okay, Namaqualand lamparusia. You think pollinates that? Look at it. you gotta 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 get in there. Some kind of math, you think? Ah, oh, come on up just on a barren quartzitic sands, right at sundown in the Maquilane. Oh, that guy's kind of intimidating. God damn, you know, somebody's, somebody's can damn well kill you. I guess it depends on the genus. It's a mean bastard. It's hard to believe. Somebody dying from a scorpion sting, but uh, it's it seems to be uh, somewhat common here as far as venomous uh, creatures go. Why are you so flat?